Hi folks, I recently had a chance to interview a young and talented endodontist from Medellin, Colombia. Dr. Felipe Resperado is an endodontist and associate professor of endodontics at the University of Antioquia in Medellin, Colombia, and also in private practice in Medellin. We had a conversation via Zoom on some of the areas that he's been working on, specifically in the area of autotransplantation, and he wanted to share a couple of cases with you that I would like to bring to you. If you like this content, uh, don't forget to like and share and also subscribe to our channel uh, a lot more videos are coming up without any further ado let's talk to Dr. Felipe Resperado so let's let's talk a little bit about what I what I do what I'm doing right now is using dynamic navigation to uh, do the auto transplantation in a planned more predictable way what this uh, can give us is very short extra alveolar time. That is what we want. Just to, to reduce the extra oral time of a donor tooth to just a matter of seconds. That's, that's the main goal. That's what we want. So this is a, a case of one of the clinical scenarios we can find. That is when you don't have a socket, you don't have a socket at all. So you have to create the socket from zero. This is a 23 year old patient and we're transplanting a third molar to a second premolar position. So what we use here was a periapical x-rays, panoramic x-ray, CBCT. Uh, we, from the CBCT, we print the 3D replica of the donor tooth. We also have an intraoral scan in order to match those two files, the CBCT, the DICOMS from the CBCT, and the STL from the internal scanning, we make a match so we can have the patient in the computer and do a previous digital surgery and also a dynamic navigation device. So this is the, the scenario in x-rays. We don't have a second premolar from birth, was never there, but she has a big space and apparently good bone. And we have the donor right here, an uninterrupted third molar. This is how we do the planning. First of all, we do the segmentation of the donor tooth. That is, remove every other tissue from the tooth we are interested in. Now we take that tooth and we transplant it into the new position. So we examine the ideal position, both buccolingual and mesiodistal. And then from that, we create this new STL. This STL goes into the dynamic navigation device. And this is the 3D replica. So you're essentially taking the CBCT information and printing a replica tooth that you're going to use now. What software are you using to treatment plan and get that? Um, the software that, that I use more often is Blue Sky Bio, Mesh Mixer, and also uh, Promexis from Plan Meca. Okay. Those are the three uh, more common software that I use. Yes. So what we have here is the new uh, STL with the tooth already transplanted digitally. So as you can see, you have the silhouette, the 3D silhouette in pink of the transplanted tooth, right? So with this, we put, in this case, three or four implants together, fused in order to create one big socket that can be able to receive this donor tooth. So this is what we plan in the dynamic navigation device. The one that I use is called Navident. And this is what we see in the Navident. We see in real time, we get real time feedback of where we're drilling, three dimensionally in the dicom of the patient. So you see the CVCT and you see exactly that you're drilling through the path you planned be, uh, with anticipation. Okay, okay. And this is the clinical situation. As you can see, enough 
enough space and a little loss of bone here in the buccal side because of the lack of the premolar. We start drilling, we enlarge those, uh, those implant sites until they fuse together in one big socket. Now we place the 3D replica. We check the, we start doing fitting attempts. And once we have it exactly in the position that we want, we extract the donor tooth just then. Since in the 3D replica, we have to do a little bit um, of grinding here in the Michel on this tall site, we did, we tried to replicate those in the actual tooth without touching the root, always by the crown, and then we place it. We have it in position. Look at the similarity between the 3D replica and the actual donor tooth. And then we do the splinting. The splinting in this case is orthodontic wire and composite uh, resin composite. Were you using so, rigid splinting or um, are you using semi-rigid uh, semi splinting? Uh, flexible, yeah. Flexible, right. Flexible. Physiological splinting. Okay, terrific. For how long? For uh, two to four weeks. Perfect. It depends on the clinical criteria and the stability you see, but most of the time between two and three weeks, that's enough. Yeah, perfect. So we came from these to these here. And I have this, uh, this paper from a Selden in 2019. This is a group of experts in auto transplantation and they compare their old technique from their own clinic when they have conventional auto-transplantation and they have a success rate of 78% and a survival rate of 84%. And they started using fully guided. They did 50 cases, conventional, 50 cases, fully computer guided. And they increased the success to 86% and the survival to 92%. And this is a group of experts. So if this can enhance the prognosis of a group of experts, imagine what it can do for the non-expert. That's terrific. So wh what do you, why do you think that the guided um, procedure compared to the non-guided procedure would have a higher success rate? I think that the, all this technology is only to reduce external time because uh, in the old days, what we had to do was do all the feeding attempts with the actual donor tooth. Every, every feeding attempt is a uh, damage for the periodontal ligament. Yep. And you have to keep it more in the outside of the tooth, of the socket. And every time you feed it, you kind of uh, push it and, and manipulate it. So that's why it's better because you do all the feeding attempts with the 3D replica and right. you reduce the time with all the planning. I think that's the key. Do you think also the way I see it that maybe the the guided uh, version of it will allow a closer approximate because you can do that with once you have the replica from the printed tooth, you know, manually as well. But I feel the guided version will allow a more precise fit without removing too much bone so that when you're exactly. placing the uh, tooth inside the socket, you're going to have a closer proximity from the bone to the root or all over exactly. and that will allow faster healing in that way that's you know through yeah. you're absolutely right that's what we want uh, to remove bone just as much as we need not too much bone uh, the implant the transplant story needs to be a little loose one to two millimeters loose so the fibrin blood clot can establish and healing starts to happen but it can to be too tight it cannot be too tight or too loose. Too loose right. So now I did the root canal treatment, uh, as you can see here, small cavity access. And since the look, since the tooth didn't look so good in that position, uh, we did uh, an only restoration and we make it look like a mini molar. Instead of looking like a big premolar, we made it look like a mini molar. 
and it looks more natural uh, that way. An important thing here is remember this resorption here. Look at it right now with, with a tooth in it. How it's no longer resorbed, the periodontum. Do you see it there? Yeah, it's amazing. That concavity is filled up, apparently. Yeah. It's filled up real nice. That That is really an amazing case. And I think it was just so, I mean, it was so uh, masterfully treatment planned and executed. Um, this is a really great service for a 19 year old who has, uh, you know, is missing a permanent tooth here. And, uh, you know, by being able to get that uh, wisdom tooth that was um, previously, uh, you know, that was uh, impacted in place. Now you've actually given both the wisdom tooth some utility as well as uh, saved uh, the, the location for an implant, which, and, you know, having your own PDL and cementum uh, in connection with your, uh, bone is going to be wonderful. So let me ask you this question. How long did you wait before you did the endo? As soon as you removed the splint a couple of weeks later, did you do the endo or yeah. did you do it a little I bit later the, or soon? I did the endo three weeks later. Three weeks later. You, you can, you can, you cannot wait too long because the necrotic pulp tissue might, might infect the area. Exactly. Even though it's not bacteria infected, right. just the, the decomposing of the pool can uh, damage the tissue around it. So yeah. you wait for two or three weeks, two to three weeks, and then you start treatment, endodontic treatment. Right. And that way you prevent uh, any uh, any further damage. Also, it's important to, to clarify that this is a fully developed tooth. So there's a very little chance of revascularization, lower than 10%. So that's why we did the root canal treatment. Yeah, that's a, that's a key. I think that's a key point. If you're having a um, um, and developing like a you know a 16, 17 year old developing a wisdom tooth, or even an 18 year old, the, the tooth is developing and it's not completed based on its developmental stage, you may have a chance for the root formation if you have that dental follicle that it could still potentially be saved. But once you have the formation of the root complete and you have an adult wisdom tooth in place then that's probably not going to happen as we see with the anterior teeth, for example, that go through trauma adult uh, teeth. So I think one of the other areas, um, um, Dr. Restrepo, is to kind of make sure that the CBCT information is also used to assess the viability of root canal therapy on these teeth after placement, correct? Because sometimes you get wisdom teeth that have very gnarly roots that are complete in those cases and may, you know, you don't want to find out after the cementation that the yeah. end was not going to work, right? Exactly. We use it to for everything for for that purpose. See the shape of the root, single root, multi rooted, uh, maybe lung curvatures or a very difficult anatomy, uh, the length, the width, everything. We try to check everything, and, it, and every time we ha we have a possibility of revascularization, we do it. I don't have the case right here. This is just two examples that I brought right. for the for the interview. But uh, I have also uh, revascularized cases that are beautiful. They are in fact, I like those better because what better treatment than not doing root canal treatment, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you know what I always say is the best root canal filling is the pulp. So we should uh, yeah. make sure we keep that um, uh, alive to the extent possible. Keep it as minimalistic as possible. Now, how long of a recall have you had on this particular patient, and in general, on the longest ones, yeah. please? In this particular patient, we have a two-year follow-up, but I, the longest that I have is 15-year follow-up. Wow. 15 years, but not with this technology. With yes. conventional technology. Conventional techniques, right. Because I started doing this 15 years ago. I started getting interested in auto transplantation. But this new protocol, we just developed it three years ago. Two and a half, maybe three years ago. And this is the longest that I have. The, this patient is coming for the three-year follow-up uh, later this year. Terrific. That that is. Maybe we can get together and do another uh, video on the just the post-op part of it. That's this is terrific. I think this is a really great thing, and uh, I know we're going to have you over to give your full presentation to our residents at the school. Uh, so that's going to be planned. Uh, but why don't we take a quick break and come back and do another case with you on this very important topic?
Let me just, yes, of course. Let me just show you. This is the panoramic view. Just to show you there's bone all around the tooth. There's periodontal ligament space. Everything is working normally. This is the two-year CBCT follow-up. Yes, let's come back and see the other case. Terrific. Awesome. Look at that. Wonderful. All right.